Jerusalem artichokes, yes. wonderful vegetable. You can't go wrong. If you fail to grow them, you hang up your gardening space forever <laughs> and retire to computers or something. Bang them in the ground, you can earth it up during the year and then dig them out from late October onwards. Does it produce a, a plant similar to... To, to potato? No, potato not a bit. It grows up like a sunflower. Okay. And it's actually related to the lettuce, funnily right. enough. Last year I had I planted six of those tubers and I harvested a wheelbarrow full of tubers. Okay. Far too many, so don't plant more than three of them. You could put that whole thing in, but uh, you might be better off by having just one shoot growing up. You can see the roots there already coming out. So the best time to plant them would be in March. So we spaced them about a foot apart. So Michael, when you replant them the following year, make sure that you select nice smooth ones. See that okay. one? With a nice smooth skin. And then you select for quality, for smoothness, rather yes. than getting them knobblier and knobblier. Yeah. So don't so use the leftovers. Like, it's like selective breeding then. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So the spacing is about, about a, a foot? A foot, yeah, yeah. You can also, what I often do in late summer, I cut the shoots off at about a me one meter fifty or so. And that um, reduces the height of them and stops them from blowing over. All you do is stick a tuber in the ground, yeah. drag some soil around the base and off Way it goes go. and do nothing with them. Okay, well they certainly look very healthy and how many are we going to get from each plant? Oh, too much. <laughs> <laughs> each plant will produce up to 20 big tubers. Okay. Right. Ridiculous amount. So. And so regards disease, feeding? Nothing. Don't do anything? Absolutely nothing. The only thing I might consider doing later on, they, they will grow another two, three feet mm. if we leave them. And then you get the autumn gale. So what I do is I usually cut them to about that height again. And once you take the in September, off, they're not going to get any Well, they keep sprouting from the sides oh, right, again. Right. and yeah, It's just to stop them from collapsing. Okay, Klaus, we're, we're back here. It's actually uh, January now, so it's pretty, it's pretty cold. But uh, our artichokes here, we could have started harvesting them when? Oh, it's from November onwards, okay. really. Yeah, yeah. It's um, a fantastic winter vegetable, really, because yeah. any time you go out and dig some, yeah. you don't have to take them in and store them. And they're fine in the ground over the Absolutely, winter. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Do you see what we've got? Yeah. Like you pull. pull. Uh, Bash it a little bit. So that's the tubers, knobbly little tubers. Yeah. Very potent and powerful. So when you, if you haven't eaten them yet, just start with a few. Now they're very hard to spot, so they can become weeds the next year. So when we harvest them afterwards, I'll dig that ground over twice. Just to make sure. And you get make rid of sure to one. get e even the tiny little ones. And then for next year, we just basically replant some of these. Yeah. In February, March even in the same place. But dig them out and then plant one foot apart. They leave a lovely soil after them as well. So we've got a good few knobbly little fellas here. Yeah, the easiest vegetable to grow. So totally trouble free. Yeah, not really. Great beginner's vegetable. Yeah, not really much to do. Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm.